So we're gonna go over our Goal Zero Adventure Wagon wiring integration kit. This is a kit that's meant to integrate a Goal Zero Yeti system into an Adventure Wagon wiring system. So you can use a Goal Zero Yeti as your house battery and it can charge off of the van's alternator uh, just like any other auxiliary battery system. Uh, this kit is specifically meant for Adventure Wagon's new aft wiring harness setup. Uh, for this installation, you can refer to the above tool list on your screen right now. The full kit is a combination of Goal Zero's Yeti Link vehicle integration kit and some modified components uh, that we create to integrate into the Adventure Wagon cabin wiring harness. The components for the installation that we use are the Yeti Link module, an Anderson cable, which is your power out from the Goal Zero Yeti, a modified EC8 cable, uh, which is your charging port in, a retainer clip for that EC8 cable, and a 12 volt regulator to regulate the power uh, in the whole system, kind of depending on what uh, draws are being used on a, on a circuit. If you haven't already installed your Adventure Wagon cabin wiring harness, you're going to want to do that first. The point at which this component comes into play is when you get to where you are installing the fuse block component. So you will have already run all of the separate circuits throughout the van uh, and all the wiring leads. And this is where the Goal Zero integration kit will come into play. So we're going to get into the actual install of the components onto the fuse block panel that's included in the Adventure Wagon kit. Uh, the one that we have in front of you here is, is specifically for the Sprinter 170. Uh, we will get into the Sprinter 144 as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a slightly different shape, but all the components are the same, so we'll go over some of those details as well. So first off, you're going to have your 12-volt regulator and route that to the panel. Um, it's pretty simple. The, the regulator will come with the hardware already installed on it, so you just need to back those nuts out take the bolts out, and then you're gonna take the regulator and mount it to the back of the fuse block panel, as you see here. So you'll notice that the wires coming out of the regulator are facing downward, and that's just gonna help with uh, kind of all the wire routing. There's gonna be a bunch more wiring that comes in uh, once we get the whole system together. So the positive and negative leads coming off of the 12 volt regulator are going to be meant uh, for the light circuits in the cabin wiring harness. So if you've already installed those circuits onto your fuse block, that's, that's the point at the fuse block that you're gonna wanna install uh, the positive red lead coming off your 12 volt regulator. You can, ground, uh, you can ground it at whichever ground post is available. And then the two the two leads coming in from the lights one and lights two circuits are going to bind into the yellow and black wires, which are uh, already set up with buck connectors coming off of the 12 volt regulator. Okay, now we're gonna bring out our modified EC8 cable. Uh, this is a cable that is part of the Goal Zero uh, vehicle integration kit, uh, but we modify it slightly to just uh, work better with our cabin wiring harness setup. Um, so you'll see one lead is red, or has red heat shrink at the end of it, and the other one is black. And you're going to attach those to the posts on the back of the fuse block panel. You'll notice that we're just hand tightening these. This is for demonstration purposes only. Um, you'll want to come back through and tighten those. Um, it's sometimes helpful to leave these connections as loose as possible, as long as possible, so you can manipulate the fuse panel uh, while you're trying to move it into place. Then when you've got it where you need it, then you can tighten them down. And now we've got our Anderson cable, which is going to be coming out of the goal zero into the fuse block. So you can see we've just got a positive and a negative uh, with ring terminals at the end. And so this is what's actually powering the fuse block from the goal zero. So you'll see on your fuse block, you've got all of the common grounds towards the top 
that's where the black ground cable is going to connect at that, on that, at that common post right in the middle. And your positive red cable is going to be at the common hot post at the bottom of the fuse block. In the video, you'll see us actually putting on the, the ground, but there will be another ground post or another ground cable that is going to be using that ground post as well. So you can wait until it's time to put that one on. So this ground cable is actually what's going to be included in the Adventure Wagon Cabin wiring harness. So you're going to reuse this and it's going to share the ground post from the Anderson cable at the top of your fuse block. And then this one is going to run from the ground point on your fuse block to ground post on the back of this panel. The two light leads for uh, the ceiling light harnesses coming off of the cabin wiring harness uh, are going to come together and into the yellow and black wires coming out of your 12 volt regulator. So your red positive leads, um, you're going to, if you've already installed them in the fuse block, you're going to need to clip off the fork, uh, you know, terminal end, strip the end of the wire on each one of those red connections. You're going to uh, splice those together and put them into the butt connector at the end of the yellow wire coming out of the 12 volt regulator and then you'll crimp that and heat shrink it and then you're going to do the same thing to the uh, ground the black wires coming off of lights one and light two uh, of the cabin wiring harness and you're going to put those into the butt connector on the black wire coming out of the 12 volt regulator and crimp it and heat shrink it and here's the plate for the sprinter 144 uh, you can see basically the same principles but it's a different shape and different placement of the components so we're going to show you where those components go. Uh, the 12 volt regulator mounts to the back of this panel as well. Um, so you see that here again wiring is facing down. You can follow the same connection points that uh, were in the 170 section. Um, you know the, the yellow and black wires will connect to your light harness the same way the black and red positive wires coming out of the 12 volt regulator will connect to the fuse block in the same way as does the EC8 cable and the Anderson cable.
at this point we're going to take it to the van itself um, and this is where you'll uh, be going back to the instructions for the actual cabin wiring harness and continue from this. This is where you're going to be connecting all of the individual circuits and leads coming off of the cabin wiring harness into the fuse blocks. So if you have your Adventure Wagon cabin wiring harness already installed, you're going to need to remove this positive cable running from the positive post on the back of the fuse block mounting plate to the positive post on the fuse block itself. So make sure you remove that as part of this installation. It'll be in the same place for the 144 and the 170. So now it's time to actually prep our Goal Zero Yeti for the installation. So there's two slots that we're pointing out here. The one on the right is where your Yeti link module is actually going to be placed. But first you need to take this plastic cover off, uh, which is how the Yeti is going to be shipped. So we'll unscrew this panel and get it out of the way. And now we're ready to take our Yeti link and install that. You'll see there's two con connections coming out of this module. So there's a mini USB connection that is kind of over to the right underneath the Yeti link module. And then you've got a, uh, another ECA connection uh, with the blue connector there. There is a flat edge uh, on the hot lead that will match up with a flat edge on the receiving end there. So. You, there's kind of only one way to do it. You'll notice that the, uh, the Yeti link will, will light up at this point. The EC8 connection doesn't have a click or anything that tells you it's in place. You just push it in until it... Um, same thing with the micro USB. And the Yeti link module is, is sort of the same thing. If you push it down and then slide it backwards. Um, All right, so we'll move on to uh, modifying a wall panel for the Yeti integration. So the, the purpose of this is to show you how you can modify your wall panel for a wiring grommet um, that's going to allow the Yeti specific wiring to come out through your wall and connect to uh, your Goal Zero Yeti. Uh, if you got your Adventure Wagon kit, if you ordered it at the same time as you ordered uh, the Goal Zero uh, integration setup, uh, you're not going to need to do this. Your wall panel will come ready to go. Uh, but if you had installed your kit previous to ordering your Goal Zero Yeti integration kit, then you're going to need to modify your wall panel to, to accommodate it. So uh, we're going to start off with putting down some painter's tape. Uh, this is just basically so you can mark your panel about where you're going to need to drill your hole. Um, you can, the, the location can vary slightly, but we're just going to do some quick measurements here. Uh, that's going to put it pretty much right in line with where it'll come from uh, Adventure Wagon. Uh, so it's 22 inches down from the top edge of the panel and 11 inches forward of the rear edge of the panel. So we're just measuring that now. It's going to give us a, a, a place to mark it on the tape so that you don't get ink on your, on your upholstery. So we're going to be marking a few things. It's going to be the dead center location of the actual uh, roughly 2 inch hole uh, that the wiring will come through and then four mounting holes that are meant for the screws that hold the grommet in place. So mark the dead center there. Now I'm using the hole saw itself to give me an idea of where exactly the hole is going to be so that I can trim back the upholstery prior, uh, before cutting the, uh, the hole through the panel itself. Um, you don't need to be exact with this. You can actually cut it away uh, slightly further than the diameter of your hole saw. Um, and that's okay because the grommet is going to hold any, the grommet will cover any uh, mistakes you might make. Um, you, don't, you don't want to go way past it, but a little bit is, is not a big deal. So we're just basically cutting uh, an X in the upholstery and peeling back the little flaps to make room for the hole saw to get in there and cut through the wood without grabbing the fabric and fraying it and all that.
Uh, so I taped the flaps of the fabric back and I'm going in with the hole saw. You'll see it makes a little bit of a mess. Um, it's basically just going to go right through the reflectix on the back side of the panel and th that's no big deal. You're going to end up cutting a little bit of the excess away. And so we're using a two inch hole saw. That's what we had uh, available to us. Actually a one and seven eighths inch hole saw would work great. Uh, whether that's a hole saw or a step bit that opens up a hole to that size, slightly smaller than two inches is a little bit better. Now I'm lining up the grommet uh, to mark the mounting holes. Uh, I'm first using a smaller drill bit to mark where the holes are on the grommet itself. And, and I don't want a drill bit that's bigger than those holes because you'll just tear up the grommet itself. So this is basically just a placeholder so we know where the, where the mounting holes are going to be. And then we're going to go back through with a slightly larger drill bit um, for the T-nuts, which are going to capture the hardware that holds the grommet in. So you can see the, uh, the drill bit here is about the size of the little threaded shaft on the, uh, on the, on the T-nut itself. It should be slightly bigger. You don't want to go too big because then the holes for the mounting holes are going to kind of interfere with the actual hole that the grommet is taking, or the actual hole that the wiring goes through for the grommet. Um, this one, I believe, is a 13 64th. Quarter inch is a little bit big, um, and you can't do too much smaller either because then the uh, the T nut won't go actually won't actually go. The T nut will not actually seat in place. Okay, so here you can see I'm peeling back the uh, reflectix away from the outer perimeter of the hole and the mounting holes on the, uh, for the grommet. And we're getting ready to place our T-nuts. So you can see here the T-nuts, the actual teeth on them and the flange, they're kind of overlapping the edge of the grommet hole itself. Um, so that was why a slightly smaller hole saw uh, could work better. Uh, so you're placing the T-nut in from the back side of the hole and you're just going to give it a quick little flap with the hammer to seat it in place. You don't want to go crazy with it because you don't want the tines on the T-nut to be um, poking all the way through the panel. And then you can see I came in here with a little bit of contact adhesive and I'm just taking extra fabric. Uh, to wrap around the inside of the hole. Um, I just used a heat gun here so I can let the, the adhesive flash a little stick in place. Uh, you could actually just cut all of the fabric away rather than cutting an X in it. Either way works fine. The grommet's going to be covering up all of this. It's going to be hiding any imperfections that, that may happen while you're doing this modification. All right, so the T-nuts are in place. Uh, flip the panel back over, we're gonna line up the grommet and we're gonna take our black Phillips head screws, the M4 screws that are going into the T-nuts. Uh, you just wanna carefully thread these in place. You don't wanna punch through hard with your screwdriver or the, or the, uh, the screw itself and end up poking the T-nut back out. It'll just fall out of the back of the panel. So you just kinda of wanna be gentle with it. Once it grabs those threads, you can screw it down and, and the bolt is actually gonna hold the T-nut in place from that point on and just one at a time, screw it down until it's uh, mounted securely and you're good to go. So now we're just gonna be a little bit different. Uh, this, is, this is kind of the procedure on our black hex apply panel. Um, same principle goes for the bamboo panel. Um, we're just putting some tape down to mark the location of the hole as we did with the upholstered panel. The placement of this particular hole is just, uh, just to kind of show you what it's like to drill through this panel. It's not an exact placement like it would be. You're going to want to refer to the drawings to get the actual placement um, of this particular hole. So the same procedure goes. So I marked the center of the uh, of the actual grommeted hole and placed the grommet over that and a small drill bit to mark out where the mounting holes are going to be, just like I did with the upholstered panel.
All right, so I just came through here on the bed. You can see um, I was just painting the edge uh, of, you know, we use a paint pen. Uh, you can just use, you know, regular paint with a paintbrush. And I'm peeling away some, some of the extra reflectix as well. And from this point on, the procedure is uh, just the same. Um, you want to be extra careful uh, because of the, the thickness of these panels not to allow the tines of the T-nuts to go all the way through. So don't give it a really hard smack with the hammer, just enough to seat the the uh, T-nut the in place uh, well enough for you to, to stick the hardware in from the other side. And from this point on, the procedure is exactly the same. You're just going to... Okay, so we're gonna show you how to do the final connections uh, of the wiring kit into the goal zero now. Um, so the first thing is we're gonna put a little cable tie anchor underneath the lid of the goal zero. This holds the Anderson cable in place. It just helps keep it from backing out in case you're you know, going down washboard roads or whatever. It's just a little bit of a uh, extra insurance to keep it in place. So run the cable through the back and then up through your cable tie and plug it into the Anderson connection port underneath the lid and pull the cable tie tight and then you can snip off the extra. I just kind of tucked it. All right, so we're done with that. Now comes the EC8 cable. So this is the charging link for the goal zero coming out of the wall. Pull the cap off and there's a little retainer clip that comes with your Yeti link from goal zero. So that EC8 cable is going to uh, plug into the back of the Yeti link module. Um, you just basically push, it's a good solid connection, you push until you can't really push anymore, and then you slide this retainer clip in through the back and it holds the EC8 connection in place. All right, so we're ready to put the Yeti link into vehicle mode. You're gonna need a paper clip or something thin like this. There's a little access point over here on the link. Um, you need your vehicle, or you need your Yeti link to be in vehicle mode to safely charge off the vehicle's alternator and stop pulling power from the vehicle's battery um, when the alternator is off. So the paper clip goes down to that port, you press it four times, and you know that it's in vehicle mode if these four lights at the front of the Yeti link blink all together. If they blink in succession from the bottom working up, that means it's back into tank mode. So just keep that in mind. All together is vehicle mode, and that's what you want when the Yeti is hooked up inside your van.